A year and a half ago, I attempted a challenge run where if you can be Persona 4 Golden while only using Yu Narukami. Today we are now going to do the opposite and see if you can beat it without him. The rules are quite simple. Number 1. Any form of the pro tag attacking is not allowed, such as regular attacks, skills, and all-out attacks. Keep in mind any moments where we're forced to do so will not count. Number 2. He's also not allowed to support the party in any form like healing or giving buffs. Though he is allowed to use them on himself since he needs to be alive in order for us to even fight. Number 3. The party members must be set on act freely. And 4. I must be playing on a new save on hard difficulty with some modifications, which we'll get into later. Now, for the streams, there actually was a fifth rule, which was every time I died, I would have to spin the punishment wheel, but it got abolished later in the run, and you'll see why. And before we head straight into this run, I do like to make a disclaimer, especially to everyone that's new to this game from the multiplayer release, this will not be an accurate retelling of the story, but there will still be spoilers throughout this video. This is your only warning to leave now, so your Persona 4 experience doesn't get ruined here. With all that said, let's get into the run. Now at this point, I don't think I need to explain this intro again, but to summarize, Yu moves in with his uncle and cousin, and then people start getting killed. We find a world inside of a TV to see if they are linked to the murders, only to find shadows in here. Yu awakens to his Persona and starts fighting. And a little reminder, the run hasn't officially started until we get party members. Yosuke then gets a persona, and our friend Yukiko goes missing. We go back into the TV world to find her, and now this is where the run begins. Now because Yosuke is going to be on his own for now, there is going to be a lot of grinding to do in both level ups and items. What I mean by that is that with Yosuke being weak to electric moves, Shadow Che will attack him twice, which will do a lot of damage. So we have to level him up by quite a bit in order to live this. However, while grinding for levels, Yosuke is going to be running out of SP very fast, and since we can't go out until we defeat the boss, I have to do the chest strat where when you open a chest, go back to the entrance, and come back, you can open it again for another item, and hope they're either snuff souls or soul drops to restore his SP every time, which are pretty rare to get. After a long while, I leveled up to 6 and thought this was alright, so I went in to go fight Shadow Chie. Now how this fight works is basically one big loop. Yosuke attacks with Garu, Chie uses Green Wall to resist, then Mazio, and if connected, hits Yosuke again for a total amount of 60 damage, and the pattern repeats until Green Wall wears off. Now the fight wasn't really hard, but it was very time consuming since Yosuke can only do so much damage with Wind since it's their weakness, but he doesn't have many opportunities to do so. It's a good thing he also has Dia, so he can heal himself, otherwise this run would have already been dead and this video wouldn't even have been made. Now at the end of this fight, things were actually getting intense as Shadow Chie is just a few hits away from dying, but Yosuke is also very low on SP, and if he runs out, he won't be able to heal himself anymore. Things were actually looking good though, until this happened. Wait, what? Why are you healing me?! Now you may think it isn't that big of a deal that he healed me, until you see this. This may or may not kill her. Oh my god. I have to- I have to rush this. I have to rush this so I can make him attack. As you can see here, her health is just one ant stomp away from being gone. But as you may also see, Yosuke is all out of SP. And what does that lead to? Oh. Would you look at that? Oh, because this guy wasted a heal on me. Oh, because he wasted a freaking heal on me. If he did not heal me, I, we would have won this. We would have won this if he chose not to heal me. So, yeah, all because Yosuke made the mistake of healing me, I now have to spin the punishment wheel. Alright, so, here we go. Punishment. First off, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. 
We're doing... And then number... Oh my god, please don't be anything stupid. Bear... God, we better not land on the 100. We better not land on the 100. Okay, you know what? I'm fine with 20. No, 20... 20 ain't bad. 20 isn't bad. So after that, I decided to grind two levels more, and now she does about 30 damage to Yosuke when hitting him twice, which made this a lot easier and we won. After that, we saved Chie, and now we get ourselves another party member for this run. And at this point, we are now free to do whatever we want, such as social links or ranking up social stats, but because none of the teammate social links are active until we beat the dungeon, I immediately go back into the TV world to go save Yukiko. Now throughout this whole grind session in this dungeon, We've made some important discoveries that you should all know. First off, in the Shadow Chie fight, you may have noticed that Yosuke has only been healing himself with Dia and not items, or as you can see we have a lot of. And after a while, we've made the discovery that party members on Act Freely do not use items at all. The worst part about this is when a party member dies, they won't be able to use a revival bead or a bomb of life to revive each other. So if a party member dies, they are dead for the whole fight. Now during the first mid-boss fight, I was thinking of allowing heal support so they can use revival items to revive each other, but that is when we made the second discovery. Even on heal support, nothing changes. They still behave the same as they do on Act Freely. And earlier I realized Chie's default tactic was full assault, and I've been fighting with that for a few minutes. But even so, there was no clear difference between that and Act Freely. After making these discoveries, I am now convinced when Atlas decided to add in direct commands, they didn't even bother to properly program the other tactics because now that you can control your party members, after that being the main complaint of not being in P3, they were like, why waste our time with this? We don't have to since direct commands is what everyone wanted. Like what kind of dumb frick would not want to play with controllable party members? And then called it a day. So yeah, to everyone wondering why they have to be stuck on Act Freely, it doesn't matter what other tactics you use. Unless maybe there are some things I don't know about and they actually work but I haven't seen it, they all behave the same, no matter what you use. Also, I'm not gonna lie, these AIs are pretty stupid. Whenever they fight a new enemy, they try to use every skill they have so they can find their weakness, which isn't a bad thing, but occasionally when they actually do know their weakness, they don't go for it at all and just use dumbass moves like Makajam. There are so many moments throughout this whole run of me yelling at Braindead AI that I could literally make a whole video compilation out of it. If this video hits 2000 likes, I'll do it. I mean, not being able to use items is already stupid enough, but you're going to see even more than that as we go on, and we're gonna keep record of that. But anyways, on my first attempt of fighting the Avenger Knight, I was pretty screwed. Have you got all the trophies in P5R? Uh... Wow. Wow. Oh god. Okay. So now we know the AIs are not smart enough to try and revive each other. Here we go. Oh my god. Why? Oh my god, I did not want to get- I did not want to become broke already, just because of a fight. I'll take 50 squats over 50 gift subs. Remembers. Now, the Avenger Knight is level 11, and Yosuke was level 10 and Chie was 9. This just shows that being slightly underleveled was very bad since they're never gonna revive each other. So in order to get past this fight, I decided to level up Yosuke to 12 and Chie to 11, and went back to get some armor. On my second attempt, I actually got very lucky this time as he was mainly targeting me, and even when he hits the party members, they won't get one shot anymore. Now it was time for the main event, Shadow Yukiko. <laughs> Wait. 
is that? But I'm the biggest bird, I'm the biggest bird. Now given the circumstances with these AIs, we had no chance. Double Fangs almost kills, and Chie dies very easily to her burning ashes. Another issue is the way how Yosuke heals. Now apparently there's a specific range where the AIs would want to heal, and as you can see, Yosuke is literally at 95 health, which is basically half of his HP gone, and apparently that's not the healing range for the AI. That's very bad, because he can literally die in the next hit. So yeah, our next worry of the AIs is the healing range not being half of their HP gone, but instead when they're literally a hit away from dying. With this attempt going as badly as expected, came my next punishment. Oh, oh no, no, give me plagues! Oh, oh my god. Now this is going to be a really important fact that you all need to keep in mind for the rest of this challenge. And most of you are going to think this is stupid, but for a challenge run like this, you actually need to overlevel the bosses by quite a lot because the tactics aren't properly programmed, the healing range is very bad which can cause them to die very easily, the best you can really do is just find good items from gold chests and get better armor, and that's it. Because of all this, there is no strategy. So while it is stupid, overleveling is the only option you have for this kind of run. That being said, remember at the beginning when I said rule 4 is to play on hard difficulty with some modifications? Well what I meant by that is that after having a discussion with my chat, we agreed to change the EXP setting to give us a lot more, and later on I did the same for money since it's also part of the grind. The reason for this is because grinding is just the one thing I hate when it comes to doing challenge runs, because for me personally, I mainly care about boss fights. It's mainly the reason why I get burnt out from doing these, in fact it's even the reason why I gave up on the solo I guess run on the answer. So we all felt like it was best to make this change. That being said, I got my party members to level 20 in 30 minutes, and I also found a fire suppressor for Chie so it can help her dodge fire. And now it was time to re-attempt the fight. Now honestly, I cannot even explain what the frick even happened in this attempt in any way. And you know what? I think it's best that I just let the footage play. Don't be stupid. You're stupid. That's bad. And then, bro, see this is what's so stupid. They don't even worry about healing. They just straight up go for her. Like, yeah, they're not even wor- Like, he would normally- Oh, no, 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 frick. God, if Shay gets hit by this, she's dead. Like, actually dead. Oh, yeah, she is so dead. Please hit me. Hit me! Okay, please. Spend this time healing each other. Jay, you better not use- That better crit. Oh my god. Wait, that's a lot of damage. But that chi- Oh my god, Chie ma- Chie! Chie! Ooh, no! Why did she get hit? Bro, what- What kind of use is it gonna be? Oh my god. She might die to this. If she gets double fanged, she'll- She's over. Yosuke, you better heal her. You better heal her. Don't heal yourself. Oh, you're such a dumb freak. Yosuke threw. He threw again. Yes. Hit me! Hit me! You better heal. Holy frick. No! Hit the print, you stupid! Oh my god. Yuki- Chie, you better dodge this. Don't be stupid. Don't be a- How the frick did Yosuke heal and you did it? You have dodge fire! You have dodge fire! How does Yosuke dodge and not you? Holy frick! That up? What are you doing? Oh no. Oh god. God, this is where it gets so bad. It gets worse right here. Because this is where she goes aggressive. This is where it gets worse. Oh no, yeah, the terror voice! That's bad! That's bad! That's so bad! Yosuke's gonna die! Yosuke's gonna die! 
He's dead. He's actually dead. Yep, there it is. Unless he dodges this, which is not happening. He survived it, though, because we're too overleveled. But he... I know for a fact he ain't surviving the next one. No! 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 Don't... Do okay. I mean, Yosuke doesn't die to win one hit, but he could literally get crit by that. I'm pretty sure he could get crit by that. No! Chie! You're stupid! I'm pretty sure he can get crit. Oh my god, you dodged. It doesn't matter, though. He's gonna keep... Dude, no! Chie's gonna keep using that move! Oh no. Oh my god, dodge fire. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Holy frick. Holy. No. Sh no way this is happening. Dude. No way this is actually happening. Oh, burn to ashes. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Oh. Oh no, that's bad. No. No. Yeah, this is where she gets aggressive. No, Chie, please. Please, no. Please remember you have items. Oh, no. Yeah, we're dead. Yeah, we're dead. We're dead. Wait, what? He could heal. He remembered. He, he could heal. Oh, my God. Oh, Yosuke might die here. No, what the frick? What is happening? What is going on? What is happening? What is going on here? Holy frick. No. Oh, no, he got par- <laughs> Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God! <gasps> oh, my God! <laughs> Dude! So, yeah. After many close calls, the AIs were able to defeat Shadow Yukiko. Seriously, there were so many instances where it could have been over, but then we got so lucky. I just can't believe we got through it like this. Now that we're finally done with this dungeon, it was time to rank up our social links. Now for this challenge run, I only plan to do the teammate social links as well as the other main characters, especially Marie since she's required, because there really is no point in doing the other since I'm not allowed to attack with you. Now what's important about the teammate social links is that they'll learn new skills and abilities as they rank up, but the most important ranks are rank 7 where they have the ability to live at 1 HP, and rank 10 where they learn a skill to evade their weakness. And remember, while a dungeon is active, teammate social links are not available until you beat it, so you gotta rank them up quickly before the next one begins. And one last thing. Remember how earlier I said there were no strats for a challenge run like this? Well, I lied. There kinda is one, and it's basically deciding which skills your teammates should use. You pretty much want to get rid of all the skills that are going to be useless like Makajim on Yosuke for example, because it is so bad and he is so stupid for using this move on almost every battle when we were grinding. It was literally this game's Marin Karen. Other skills you want to get rid of are skills that give you buffs because, from my whole experience in Yukiko's dungeon, Yosuke never used Tsukukaja and Chie never used Tarukaja. Getting rid of these skills will make room for better ones like their boost and amp skills, which make their magic skills do way more damage, especially since they can stack. Though I kinda didn't know that until a little later when my chat told me as I was actually getting rid of those skills. So uh, yeah, shouts to chat for that. And that is pretty much all the basics you need to know for this run. Now that we got all of that explaining on how these AIs work, we'll be able to get through this challenge a lot quicker now. Hopefully. It's probably still going to be a very long video, maybe an hour or something. But anyways, during my free time I got Yosuke to rank 7, just as we needed, and Chie to rank 4. Later began the next arc where Kanji became the next victim. Getting rid of stupid moves like Makajim has made regular fights a lot smoother, but that doesn't mean it's always like that. But it's still good to get rid of useless skills at least. Later, we encountered the Daring Gigas. At first he was pretty scary as he spends 3 turns buffing himself so he can kill us in one hit, and unfortunately that's what happened to Chie and Yukiko. But then when he got to Yosuke, he missed and then he ran out of SP. Because of that he can't one hit kill anymore, and with that, Yosuke was able to clutch it for us. We then make it to the end of the dungeon where we meet up with Kanji to fight his shadow. Now this is another fight that I can't believe we even got past in this attempt. As you can see, we are not only fighting his shadow, but also two other shadows called Tough Guy and Nice Guy. 
How this fight works is that Shadow Kanji in the first phase will only attack with electric and physical, and sometimes he does these moves where unless you are guarding, it's guaranteed to inflict poison on the guys and rage on the girls. As for the two shadows, the left one only provides support for both Shadow Kanji and the right guy, whereas the right guy does the attacking. The way to get past this fight is that you have to get rid of the two guys because they can cause a lot of trouble. Mainly the right guy. Fortunately for us, the left is weak to ice and the right is weak to fire, and Yukiko and Chie were able to hit him with just that. However, the worst that can happen here is when Shadow Kanji goes for Roar of Wrath to enrage the girls, they can take a lot of damage when enraged, which the right guy can take advantage of to do his rampage move, which can potentially kill. However, every time that happened, we got lucky just as we did in the Shadow Yukiko fight, because at this instant, Chie and Yukiko could have been dead, but Chie's counter kicked in, and Yukiko dodged. Chie was then able to kill the left guy, and now we just have to kill the right guy, and we can win this fight with no worries. Is what I could have said if the AIs were not being so stupid, because for some reason Chie was going for Mabufu when she knows he can block it, and Yukiko just does regular attacks, literally after using Agi just a few seconds ago. It also doesn't help that we keep getting screwed over by Shadow Kanji's Roar of Wrath and Rampage combo forcing Yukiko to heal instead of attack. Even when being enraged, it can't even attack the right Shadow. I mean, they only did a couple times, but they mostly kept hitting Kanji, and later this resulted in Yukiko dying. In the end, Chie finally did Rampage and got rid of the right guy, but now we lost our healer, so we gotta work with Yosuke's healing again. Once again, after many close calls where my party members could've been dead, but Shadow Kanji's dumb decided to attack me instead, Chie dies from a stupid crit, but Yosuke was able to clutch it once again for us, thanks to the rush command where it forces the AIs to attack, which, yes, it is allowed. But oh my god, that was so painful to watch. Unlike the last boss fight, this didn't even feel that good to win because so many braindead AI moments were occurring. I just can't with this. I guess I should at least be grateful that we got that over with and we can move on. On my free time, I got Chie and Yukiko to rank 7 and Max Yosuke's social link. Another benefit you get from maxing out a teammate's social link is that they will now null the move they were originally resisting and then resist another magic skill. Later, I unlocked Okina City to have access to the movie theater, and what this does is that when you invite one of your friends to go watch a movie, it will not only increase their level by one, but depending on the movie, it'll also give them one bonus point for three certain stats which you'll see which ones on screen. What sucks though is that you can only do this once a month for each party member because Atlas didn't want to make an already easy game a lot more easier, which sucks for challenge runs, but we'll take any help we can get. After all that, the Midnight Channel got itself its next victim named Risei Kujikawa, so now it was back to watching the AIs being stupid. And what better way to do so than to watch Yosuke use literally any move that's not wind on this lion when that's his freaking weakness which then results in the whole party dying. As we grind, Yukiko learns a skill called Recarm at level 26, which is a move that can revive anyone that's dead. And thankfully, she does know how to use it, so now I can be a little less worried about seeing someone die unless it's her. Also, when you hit rank 4 on her social link, she learns a skill called Divine Grace, which makes her restore a lot more HP. And that's when it was decided at this point that Yukiko will be a permanent party member for this run, thanks to these skills. The other two have not been decided yet, as there's still more to find out, but for now, we're gonna rock with Yosuke and Kanji for this dungeon. I then get to the mini boss of this dungeon, and this fight wasn't very hard. Honestly, I'm just gonna say this right now, mini bosses from here on out were all very easy. Though there is one mini boss that gave me the most trouble that I actually lost it with him, but that's a story for another time. For now, we head to the end to fight Shadow Risei, and this is a fight to not worry about because all you have to do is get rid of half of her HP, and then the fight ends in a scripted format where you can't attack her anymore, and then leads into a cutscene where Teddy defeats her. However, we're not done here as Teddy decided to grow a shadow out of him for some reason, and this fight was not even fun to watch because Yosuke who was able to clutch out the boss fights in the previous dungeon is being a complete dipshit because why the frick is he not healing our party members when they're a hit away from dying? Like, just look at this! How the frick... How the frick do you mess up that badly? You get crit. You really chose... 
Wait, why are you- wait, why is he not healing? I'm sorry, what? Why did he not heal? What? You're scared. Oh. Are you serious? Oh. Bro, they're, they're literally gonna die in another hit. Oh my god, dude. Dude, bro. Yosuke, please. I I'm not playing. Yosuke, quit playing! You're not even gonna heal Kanji. He's literally gonna die. Oh my god. Dude, Medea is not even that useful. Yosuke, please. <laughs> this is serious. And Yukiko is also doing bad. Okay. See, at least we got Yukiko, right? Okay, Yukiko is at least a lot smarter. Okay, maybe she's not that smart. Maybe she isn't that smart. Because how the frick do you screw up that badly? By letting... Letting yourself get crit. Like how? How do you... Like how do you screw up that badly? You literally let yourself get crit. Yes, guys. Getting crit is a choice. Yukiko, you better dodge this. And you know what? She died because she chose to. And even though everyone was dead, I decided to revive Yosuke to see if he could survive Shadow Teddy's strongest move, Nihil Hand. Okay, that is a problem. They're not gonna guard Nihil Hand. So yeah, another thing about the AIs is that they don't guard. And as you can see, that did over 500 damage, and they are nowhere close to being 500 HP. At first, I thought we were gonna be a little stuck here, but it actually isn't as bad as it seems. First off, we're now at a point where Medea doesn't heal much, so it was time for an upgrade to Mediorama, which was at level 43. I also decided to get the best armor upgrades from grinding in this dungeon, and let me tell you, these made a huge difference. I come back again, and this time I decided to bring in Chie since she resists ice, that way she doesn't die very easily. With all these upgrades, this fight was a lot more easier. This time the party can survive Nihil Hand, and with Yukiko's Mediorama, we would always be back at full health anytime someone was close to dying, though keep in mind the healing range was still pretty bad. While we're lucky Yukiko's rank 7 ability was able to keep her alive, her weakness to ice still got to her. However, at this point, he was almost dead, and now Yosuke decided to start healing, which came in clutch, so I'm not complaining. And it does seem like bringing Chie here was the right play, because there is no way Kanji would have been able to survive all these ice attacks. Thanks to Yosuke clutching up once again, we were able to defeat Shadow Teddy. Also, while I was grinding off stream, I made the decision to get rid of the punishment wheel because at this point I was like, why the frick am I even punishing myself for something I'm not even doing? I was almost about to lose a lot of money at some point, and I was like, you know what, screw this. So yeah, that's why I got rid of it. But I do plan to bring it back next time I do any sort of challenge or playthrough that requires me to play the game. And if you have any ideas on what you want to see on the wheel, leave your suggestions down below. During the next waiting period, I maxed out Yukiko and Chie social links and then began Kanji and the most important social link, Risei. You'll see how she is as we rank her up. As time passes by, the Midnight Channel strikes again, and then- <gasps> no! It's okay, we're doing a whole different run where it's now 3 against 1. Surely this won't go as badly as it did last time. So let's see what he has. Okay, big blocky guy gets to have two turns, that's pretty unfair, but so far nothing bad has happened. Oh, what's this? We got rid of the hero form! And then we have to do a whole nother fight with a stupid baby, so everything we've done before meant nothing. What a waste of SP. It's okay though, they're doing pretty good. Ooh. Oh god, come on. Oh no, Maggie Dole is bad. That's not fair, what? That's not fair! How is that fair? Okay, our only party member that can revive others is dead. Surely this couldn't get any worse. He has a move that instantly kills you when inflicted with fear. Okay, well, nothing is ever meant to be done first try. Nothing to worry about. All we gotta do is grind a ton, then get some of the best armor and weapons just like last time, and we should be good, right? Well, they seem to be doing a lot more damage. Oh, oof. Kanji got hit with exhaustion. It's okay though, because the rank 5 ability can allow Yosuke and Yukigo to cure ailments on other party members. 
Okay, nice, we got the stupid blog guy out of the way. By the way, is anyone gonna cure Kanji? Oh shoot, he's rebuilding. Wait a minute, they stopped it, but he's rebuilding again. And he's back to the stupid blog guy. No worries, we got rid of it once. We can definitely- Yukiko got hit with exhaustion, making her lose all her SP to the point where she runs out, meaning no more healing, and we die. It's okay though, we just got unlucky. Next attempt, we for sure- Cause you know, Mitsuo, if you kill me, it's over. You just need to kill me to win, that's all. No, don't go for you! Okay, so from what we've learned, even though exhaustion is an ailment like fear, silence, and evasion, etc., apparently it's something that the rank 5 ability can't cure you from for some reason. Who's the sad frick in the development team that thought that was a good idea? Because, you see, I thought for sure that ability could be useful in a boss fight like this, which is why I got rid of Amrita on Yukiko, which is a move that cures all ailments, including exhaustion. Now, there is a way of getting abilities back in this game, and to do that, you have to see them at the shopping district when they're on a bike at a time when you're finished with the dungeon, because teammates aren't available when a dungeon is active. But for some reason, social links are, and the most important, Risei is available. Now, the reason why she's so important is because at rank 7, she provides support like buffs and healing, and her rank 9 ability is when she provides one block to the whole party when someone is a step away from seeing Jesus. So I spent all my time with her, thinking I was gonna be alright once I get her to rank 9, until I found out that the deadline for this dungeon is August 12th, and she's only available 3 days a week! Meaning the time we are given from her automatically beginning on July 23rd, to the next time she's available on July 31st, literally makes it impossible to even get both abilities, and- Oh god freaking dang it, Atlas! At this point, I was all out of options. I can't get Risei's abilities, I have the best equipment you can get, everyone was level 60, and the boss is level 45. I didn't know what to do anymore, until my chat told me this. Now call me stupid all you want, because I don't use him at all, so I don't know what he has, but I found out that Teddy has a move called Energy Shower, and lo and behold, he can cure exhaustion with that move. God, why didn't they tell me this a lot sooner? Because now I gotta do a lot of grinding with Teddy. At first, I decided to just grind to level 45, because I felt like it didn't matter since all we need is Teddy to cure Yukiko so she can have as much SP as she can to heal. So I came back to fight Mitsuo, and man, how wrong was I? At first, things were looking good since Yukiko and Yosuke can do a lot of damage thanks to Agadine and Garudine, and they were able to get rid of the hero form. But as time went on, the AIs really knew how to throw so badly. Because first off, Teddy doesn't even use Energy Shower! Secondly, instead of attacking with their strongest moves, Yosuke goes for Power Slash and Yukiko goes for a regular attack. Third of all, Yukiko is no longer doing the healing, but instead Teddy, which we don't want because Teddy doesn't have Divine Grace like Yukiko does. And even sometimes he doesn't want to heal either. Like, seriously, how the frick did both of our healers not want to heal this? Also, honest to god question, why the frick did Shadow Mitsuo have four turns in this moment? Like, seriously, who the frick in this development team lived such a sad life to even make this happen? Anyways, after this, I went back on the grind, and I'm honestly glad I made that change to give a lot more EXP and money, because I would've for sure given up on this run by now, because what would've been a whole 5 hour stream of grinding became only just an hour of it. With all this grinding, Yukiko now has Meteoran, which fully restores HP to everyone, and Samari Karn, which revives a party member with full HP. So now that we have all the good stuff, there is now no reason for all this to fail. So with that, I decided to come back to Shadow Mitsu on hope for the best, but somehow, some way, nothing has even changed because the AI still behave the exact same as they did last attempt. I'm on me. You better, I mean, use it on me, yeah, you better not use it on others, like I meant to say. No, 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 you! You can go! Teddy? Teddy, please. You? Teddy! Teddy. Yukiko needs her SP the most. Alright. 
You have a job right now, and it's to freaking heal her from that. All right. Yukiko is the one that needs her SP the most. She's gonna lose so much. Why did? Oh my God! Forty. Why Diorant? Why are you, why are you using Diorant? Oh my God! How stupid are you guys? How stupid are they? This is where the stupid stuff begins. Oh my god, if you use regular attack... You have... Much stronger moves, and you go for attacks. Evil smile, that's bad. It's really bad. That's bad if Yukiko has it! <laughs> oh my god, Teddy! Dude, Teddy, I cannot with you anymore. I seriously can't with this stupid bear. Oh, 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 now you use it. Oh, awesome. The moment she's about to lose all her SP, now you use it. It was literally about to wear off the next turn, too. It was about to wear off the next turn, too. Oh. Look at that. Now look at that. Regular attacks, man. Imagine using that instead of your stronger attacks. And that's GG's. I swear, it's like every time when I come up with a good idea on how to get past this fight, the AI somehow figure out ways to ruin it. At this point, I don't even know what to do anymore. I literally have all the best options I can have, and everyone but Teddy is level 65, and I really don't want to grind past this point. Because I was so done with this that day, I decided to take a few days off and ran it back to have an unfortunate whole stream dedicated to trying to beat Mitsuo, because this boss is all luck, and we just gotta hope to get the Ala seat so I can finally stop listening to this stupid baby and this stupid freaking song! Before that, I got Teddy to level 55 so he can learn Bufodyne, and while I was on the grind, I found a patient collar inside of a gold chest, and it's basically the rank 7 ability where you can live at 1 HP. This is obviously the best thing to give to Teddy since he's been dying to Ghastly Whale a lot because we don't have his rank 7 ability until October 11th. And now, it was time to attempt Shadow Mitsuo all day until I beat him, and what a terrible way to start it off by seeing brain dead after brain dead moments. I better not be seeing this mess up. We literally could win this if they just know how to use their magic. Please. Please! Why do they keep using physical moves? Thank you. There you go. There you go. No! Stop it! Stop being a sheep. Stop looking at Yosuke and think that physical works. Don't, don't. No, oh, why is he already back in there? That's that's not that's not even fair. Oh my god, now he Stop using physical moves! Stop using physical moves. Just use energy shower, don't be Yosuke! Stop! Stop using physical moves! Bro, it doesn't even matter if you crit that. It doesn't matter if you crit that, you're still losing. So bad. No, Yosuke! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my freaking god! Stop using Power Slash! Just please. Oh my god, finally got rid of that shell. Holy frick. No, don't use that! No! Oh my god, have a freaking brain! Have a freaking brain for once, you stupid! Mother! Oh, I really want to swear so badly. I freaking want to swear. Dude! 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 Oh my god. He's literally about to die, and what do they do? Just... I, I, I just cringe so much every time I see these... Dude! Like, what? What do you want from me? Uh, Yosuke, please heal her. Oh no, you keep- Oh! Oh my god! Well, there goes, uh, Yukiko's HP. Please don't kill her. Just please don't kill her. Don't go for her! You go for evil touch again! Oh my god, bro. 
Bro, I swear it's personal at this point. It's just always going for Yukiko. Why did you use Meteoran? No one was. You're the only one at one HP, and you go for Meteoran. Oh my God, we 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 had this fight. We freaking had it. If only they like just Garudine, Garudine, Garudine. Holy little buff, buff. Like what? What is this? We're dead, are they? Please. Oh, yeah, th that that's it. They're dead. Dude. <laughs> oh, and then he rebuilt himself. We literally had that. Just so you all know, we freaking had that. And no, they do not use magic skills. What do they do? Just to... Why? I, I literally need to get rid of Power Slash now. I have to get rid of Power Slash. Well, that was a bad start to our day. And was definitely going to expect worse to happen. Until my next attempt, though... Things were actually looking like they were going in the right direction. At first, the AI started doing bad once again by using weak ass regular attacks until I started yelling at them into the mic. Literally, Garudine. Okay? All I ask. If you're not Garudine this, you deserve to die alone. Just know that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You could go? Thank you, Teddy. Teddy, I'm watching you. Thank you. This, this is what should have been happening. For the first time of fighting this boss like a million attempts ago, they all finally used their magic skills, not just one, but all of them in the same turn, all because I yelled at them. So then I thought, okay, first off, okay, maybe I could, maybe I could speak to them. Maybe they could hear me. Yosuke, please smack the crap out of Teddy. Come on. Come on. Thank you! Frick, I forgot to ask him to guard or dine. Hey, Yukito, do me a. Frick, I was too late. Boof night. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was my fault. I, I was too late. See? Look at that. See? Look at that. You, you see this, right? He could have gotten rid of the shell, and then this could have happened. Yosuke. Just. Please. Alright? Come on. <laughs> Just do it for your partner. Do it for your partner. Do it for me. Your partner. You know, your favorite man. Okay? Garudine. Yukiko, you too. Akidine, Bufadine, I want to see you all use your magic. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god, that's what I have to do? I just have to speak to them? Oh my god, why didn't I think of this? Okay, hey, 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 Teddy, what the frick? Yosuke, come on. Come on, man, be a man. And Garudine, Yukiko, come on, you too. Agadine, Teddy, Bufadine, I do not want to see any pussy crap. Alright, no pussy crap. Yes, yes, Yukiko, be a good girl. Teddy, yes. Come on, Teddy, come on, Teddy, come on. Teddy! It looked like it was working at first, and we are here once again at him, close to dying, and oh my god. Freaking gosh, I cannot believe what I had to see here. Come on, Yosuke. If you care about ending world hunger, use freaking Garudine. You too, Yukiko. Come on. If you care about ending world hunger, then use your magic. Yes, yes, please. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's understandable. But Teddy... You come on, do your part. Do your part. That's not your part. That's not your part, Teddy. That's not how you end world hunger. No, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. You could literally end cancer right now by or cure cancer if you use your magic. All right, Yosuke, you can go, Teddy. If you care about curing cancer, use magic. No! Oh, no, no, no! Frick, it was- No, 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 That's so bad, that's so bad. What are they doing? No, 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 no. Oh, evil touch. Yosuke. No, why'd you let yourself do that? Why'd you do that to yourself? Why would you do that? Yukiko, what is wrong with you guys? What is wrong with all of you? What is wrong with all of you? 
What? It's wrong with all of you! Oh my god! What is wrong with you? Why are you missing? Stop missing! Teddy's been missing too much! Why? Stop missing! Why are you missing? Why are you missing? That's really what you're gonna do. That's really what you're gonna do. That's what you're gonna do. You may think it was over, and so did I, but it wasn't. While I was molding over the AIs and talking sh** to them, they were still going. Now because I was so mad that I wasn't paying attention, somehow by only using the physical attacks that I was cringing at them for doing every time and Yukigo being all out of SP, they were able to defeat the hero form, and the reason for that is because Yosuke and Teddy started healing, and despite their heals not being as great as Yukiko's, they were still able to help us get through that fight. But the question is, were they able to finally put this to an end? No, White Wall, Yukiko's gonna- Oh no. If Yukiko gets hit by this, it's over. Oh! No, Yukiko fricked it up. Yukiko actually fricked that up. Oh my god. Well, Yukiko is dead. Yosuke, attack. How did you miss? How did you miss? Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I want to cry right now. I want to cry. I actually want to cry. So there you have it. They finally did it. And it was only just the second attempt on that stream, which I wasn't expecting. But who cares? I am finally free from this sh** hole. Now that I can do whatever I want, I took my friends to watch every movie possible, max out Risei's social link so she can get the two abilities I was talking about earlier, and after a month of no TV world, a new victim has appeared. Now because Shadow Mitsuo got us to levels we are not even meant to be at, I decided to just speedrun this dungeon and go straight into the fight. And thankfully, this fight was way easier and there's not really anything to cover. Though I will say Shadow Naoto clearly had something against Yukiko because she literally only used ice moves and Yukiko was able to dodge almost every single time. If that wasn't the case, this fight could have gone in a completely different direction. Back to free time, I maxed out Kanji and Marie's social links, and then I tried to start Naoto's, but my dumbass thought that you needed max knowledge to start her social link, but it's Courage instead, so I wasn't able to get any abilities for her before the next dungeon. While we were trying to mind our own business with this investigation, a warning letter got delivered to us, and then Uncle found out that we got ourselves involved in the case. Because of that, he took us in and kept us there for the rest of the night, but that didn't end up being a good idea as Nanako became the next victim. After gathering clues, we found out who the killer was and gave the info to Dojima. He then goes out of his way to chase him in the rain, which, by the way, don't do this in real life because you're very likely to get into a crash like Dojima just did here. Anyways, the killer jumped into the TV world with Nanako, so it was time for another rescue mission. We begin exploring the dungeon and manage to find Nanako and Persona fan number 2, because number 1 was Risei Stalker. He refused to give us back Nanako, so he took her back by force, and he got so upset he turned into some tiki with a bunch of peace signs floating above him, which is kinda satisfying to look at, not gonna lie. Now, during my streams, I had a really hard time with this fight, but I wouldn't want to blame the AIs this time, but instead how strong this boss is. At first, it's not so bad, 
But then he does a move called Quad Converge, which basically makes a certain magic skill so strong that it can kill everyone in one hit. Another issue was my party member choices. Looking back at this, if I knew which party members were right for this fight, I could have gotten this done in just a few tries. At first I was thinking Naoto, Chie, and Teddy were good, which wasn't. Then I thought of replacing Chie with Yukiko, and it almost worked, but nowhere near as good. The final issue was SP. There were two attempts where we got pretty close, but our healers ran out of SP and we died. Now I do want to mention the reason for this is because earlier if you've been noticing, single target heal skills has literally done no good for two reasons. Number one, one person is going to get healed while the other is left at less than half their HP making them very likely to die. And two, with the healing range being so bad, no one is going to bother to heal and when they do, it's just going to be the single target heal. So one of my chatters thought of a strat where if we completely get rid of the single target heals and keep the multi-target ones, the AIs will have no choice but to heal the whole party instead. And doing this, I can definitely say this was the best idea I was ever given because, sure, they use a lot of SP, but it's really the best thing to do because the AIs have been doing a lot better in healing compared to previous times. The reason I never mentioned it before was because it didn't matter until now. Now apart from having to grind for equipment and levels, SP and party member choices were a problem here. For my party, I definitely wanted to stick with Yukiko and Teddy since having double healers was the play for the last few attempts but having Naoto wasn't much of a help. In fact, for a challenge run like this, Naoto actually isn't that good of a party member because she doesn't do that much damage, her stats aren't that great, the only good thing about her is that she has no weaknesses, but that's it. So then my chat thought of replacing her with Yosuke since he has boost and amp skills which make him do a lot more damage and he also has better stats than her. Now the last thing we need was a way to manage our SP. At first we were thinking about getting SP restore items like Mage's Mark or Sorcerer's Mark, but while trying to look for that, I instead found an accessory called Moon Pots Pori Pori, I think that's how you say it, and essentially it gives you an extra 100 SP, and I kinda wanted to try this out. Now apart from the usual brain dead that always has to happen, this attempt went a lot smoother. Quad Converge no longer one hit kills, the damage they were doing was good, SP management was a lot better, especially with the extra 100 on Teddy. And thanks to Yukiko's rank 7 ability, she revives Teddy, Teddy heals everyone, and they were able to take him out. It took a little while, but having the right party members is really what mattered. And because of that, I decided that this will be my permanent party. This moment here really shows double healers is the play for this run, and Yosuke's stats and boost skills make him a better party member than the others, so this is what I'm going to be running with from here on out. We save Nanako, but she ends up in a bad condition due to the atmosphere in the TV world, so we can only hope for the best. While we wait, I just do Naoto's social link, and there really wasn't anything else to do besides movie trips and max out social stats. As time passes by, Nanako's condition got a lot worse, and then... and then... So us being all mad at Namatame for doing this made us want to throw him in the TV, but doing so will give us the bad ending, so I could do just that and call it a day, but we're gonna complete the challenge by beating the whole game, unfortunately. So we spared his life, got some info out of him, and then found out that he wasn't the killer, so we figure it out ourselves and then find out it was Adachi. When we confronted him, he ratted himself out with info that only we know and ran into the TV world. We followed him in, and he admits he's the killer and will be waiting for us on the other side. Now after how obnoxious Shadow Mitsuo was, I prepared as much as I can by grinding Yukiko and Teddy to 90 and 91, and then got the best armor I can find from this dungeon. And let me tell ya, with the upcoming bosses being level 75, you may think all is gonna go well, but man, we just like to forget these are AIs we're talking about here. Now first off, Adachi is very easy, has never given us any trouble, we don't have to talk about him anymore. After defeating him, he then turns into a huge eyeball named Amino Sagiri, and this is where we have all the issues in the world. Right off the bat you may notice that unlike the Shadow Rise fight, our HP and SP do not fully restore. Next, he's way too strong, even with all of us but Yosuke being too over leveled. And three, he has two turns. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned his most deadly combo, Nebula Oculus followed by Agne Astra, which can kill. 
And that's not even the best part. After you get rid of half of his HP, he covers himself in fog to spend a few turns charging up, to then use a Nebula Oculus that does almost a thousand damage. And the only way to live that is if the AIs can block, which they don't know how to do, meaning it's literally guaranteed death. Oh, and by the way, he does this twice. So we were pretty screwed at first, but then I thought of a way to get through this. Now I know the AIs are known for screwing up all my good ideas, and this is definitely another one they can too. But basically, as we all know, the rank 7 social link ability allows the party members to live at 1 HP, and then there's also Risei's block where she can save us when someone's about to die. So what needs to happen is that the first time he does the charged up Nebula Oculus, that's when they need to use their rank 7 abilities, and the second time he does it is when Risei has to use her block. Now to further prepare for this, I decided to level up everyone to 99. Yes, this fight is that bad that you actually need to level up to max level for this. I came back and hoped for the plan to work, but it wasn't going so well. See, the thing too is, as I said earlier, he's way too strong that both the rank 7 abilities and Risei's block get wasted too early into the fight, and when that happens, it's basically GG, because there's no way of surviving the charged Nebula Oculus without both of those abilities. The best attempt I ever had was on my 6th attempt where the plan was actually working out. The first time he did it, the rank 7 abilities were used. The second time, Risei did save everyone. But even after the plan working, they still died because his attack is still going to be buffed, and so they died to the Megidola and Quake combo. So even after surviving both times, there is still no winning. Also, the reason why my eyes were closed is because I got so tired of witnessing so much stupidity that I decided to not look at all. And not gonna lie, this was actually pretty relaxing since I don't have anything to yell at since I don't know what's even happening. So with the plan failing, all hope was lost. Until I noticed a certain piece of accessory that I seem to have obtained in this dungeon. After all those failed attempts, I decided to look into my accessories to see if there was anything useful that I obtained while I was grinding, and in the gold chests of this dungeon, you get an accessory called Divine Pillar. And what this does is that you take half the amount of damage from what you usually take, which is basically like having defense up, but permanently. However, there is a downside to this, and that is you won't be able to dodge at all, which makes their evasion skills useless. While it may be sad to not dodge anymore, I had to try this out. And luckily for me, I had just enough for the whole party, and let me tell you, this is by far the best thing you can ever get for a challenge run like this. No one was taking that much damage the first time he did the charge Nebula Oculus, Yukiko was able to save her rank 7 ability, and the second time he was about to do it, Risei gave us defense up, and with that stacked on top of our own defense, the second Nebula Oculus was nowhere close to killing us, meaning Risei's block was saved for another dangerous situation like Galgalum Eyes, but even then, that didn't matter because they were able to defeat him. I'm telling you, this accessory right here is way too broken. It has literally made this attempt look like baby stuff. Could have been useful against a certain fricker in this game. Now that we've caught the killer, the case was over, and we can finally live a peaceful life in Inaba. Is what I could say if this wasn't Persona 4 Golden. After we solved the case, we were trying to live a normal life and have fun in the snow, but then we were all pulled into the TV world by Margaret, and she told us that Marie is going to die if we don't go in there and save her. Yeah, nothing normal ever happens here. But before going in, I did all of the Third Awakenings, and even though most of the abilities aren't that useful, it's still best to do them because now they absorb the skills they originally nulled, and nulled the skills they were originally resisting. Now even though this is an optional dungeon, we're still going to try as I always want to make this dungeon a part of the challenge runs, but until now, I begin to regret because of a certain mother fricker. Now remember all the way back in Risei's dungeon when I said there was a certain mini-boss later in this game that gave me the most trouble that I actually lost it? Well, here he is, the Gorgeous King. Or if I were Murray, I would say the stupid, hideous, jerk-faced, horrible, repulsive, sickening- Bruh. Now what is it about him that made me lose it, you ask? Well, as you can see here, he only takes one damage. Just one. And if you want to do more than that, Risei can provide buffs for you and he'll take 5 damage. 5 damage! Oh, and it gets better, because the AIs for some reason don't even want to use their magic skills when that does way more damage. But I guess the way these AIs are programmed is that because physical is his weakness, they seem to think it's better to attack with that instead. And just as I was about to go insane, 
They decided to take out the other enemies for some reason. And then Yosuke just happened to have gotten tricked into using the Garudine since one of the shadows he summons is weak to wind. And just as we figured out a way to do more damage, he decided to stop summoning enemies. Oh my freaking god, why does everything have to get ruined? But after a few minutes of this bullcrap, I came to realize that at this point, we basically won. I mean, if you're looking at this footage right here, nothing is happening. He's all out of SP, meaning he can't attack, and he isn't summoning enemies anymore. So it's basically over. So you know what I did? I decided to all out attack. <gasps> now for those of you that are about to come after me saying it doesn't matter what situation I was in and that I still cheated, don't worry. In exchange for that, I did 100 push-ups on stream because I literally sat here for an hour and 10 minutes and I was not gonna sit here all night doing this stupid fight when, again, it doesn't matter as it was over at that point. But now that that's finally done with, the next mini boss gave us no trouble and now we finally got to Marie to save her. But she doesn't want to be saved so she fights us instead. This phase is nothing to worry about as you just need to do a good amount of damage so the fight ends in a scripted format. After that, she turns into Kasumi no Okami, and we have to defeat this in order to save her. Now, the way this fight works is that she's immune to every skill in the book. To even do damage to her, normally you would have to use the items you've been collecting in this dungeon so that it gets rid of the immunity. But as we all know since the very beginning of the run, the AIs don't even use items. But there is still a way to get around this. And that is with a certain skill that they all have. Now at some point in the game, the party members learn a break skill where they can break the immunity of a certain skill. Normally these are skills that literally no one ever equips because it's actually pointless and even throughout this whole run, the only time they've ever used it was against the shadows that only appear on rainy days since they're immune to everything. But the reason why I kept those skills was all for this fight specifically. And without these skills, I can say for a fact, this fight would have been impossible. And as for the fight, I can confidently say, this was the easiest boss fight of the entire run. With that concludes this side quest of trying to live a normal life, and that is it. We are done. The case is solved, we saved Marie, we are now finished with this run. We spend the last few months up until the day you has to go back home, and once we say goodbye to everyone, we can finally end the run. Is what I could say if Atlas didn't hide the true ending behind the debate option. Now to those of you that came from the multiplat release, there's a little something you have possibly missed out on, and I don't blame you because of how easily it is to miss this. In order to get the true ending, you have to see your friends at Juness, talk to Dojima, then Igor, and then the gas station attendant, and you'll meet up with the one behind the existence of the Midnight Channel, Izanami. So unfortunately, there's more to this run. But before we head straight into the final boss, there are some other things we need to cover that some of you were probably wondering about. The optional boss fights. For those of you that don't know, after beating a dungeon, there will be an optional boss at the end of the dungeon which you can beat to get some courage and an item. And to simply get this out of the way, they were all very easy. The only one that gave me trouble was the Contrarian King because Rampage was so strong it would always one hit kill, so I came back at a time when I was pretty over leveled. However, there's still one more optional boss that I'm pretty sure y'all wanted to see the most. And that is the Reaper. This fight was just as easy as Marie's. Yeah, no joke. In case you forgot, that Divine Pillar accessory is a literal permanent defense up with a side effect of not being able to dodge, and once again, this fight just shows how broken this accessory is. So now that we're done with optional fights, it was time to fight Izanami. At first I was thinking of grinding for armor, but just knowing how broken Divine Pillar is, I decided to go in and see how it goes. And once again, this fight was also just too easy. The first phase isn't anything to worry about, but the second phase is because once again this boss has two turns, and we all know how bosses like those can go. But not when you have Divine Pillar! This fight was actually a joke all because of that accessory. She wasn't doing that much damage, and that's all there is to say. The only scary thing about her is when you're inflicted with ailments, she has a move that can insta-kill, but as long as we got the rank 7 abilities and Risei's block, it's all good. And with that, they get the last hit on her, and she kills us all. 
but we're granted with a second life and Yu has his main character moment and oh no, the run is ruined because the protag is forced to attack. But obviously this doesn't count because it's scripted. So with that, it is my pleasure to say that yes, you can be Persona 4 Golden without you, Narukami. God, this was probably one of the most stressful runs I have ever done. To having to watch the AIs do the most stupidest sh to freaking Shadow Mitsuo, to just cheesing it at the very end all because of a broken accessory, it's such a relief to just be done with all of this. And if I were to rate how hard this run was, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. And that score is so high mainly because of Shadow Mitsuo and how badly programmed these AIs are. And here's also a tier list of what I think are the hardest and easiest fights of this run. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and most importantly to everyone, whether you are a regular, a lurker, or chatted once, thank you all for being a part of the streams, and for watching me yell at freaking pixels for 4 hours straight. And if you're new here and want to see my runs or playthroughs live, I stream right here on YouTube, so make sure to be subscribed and have noties on for that. With all that said, I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.